Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm going to be reviewing a doing a full recap. I don't know anybody on YouTube besides myself doing full entire recaps and reviews. Just saying. This review is going to be season 7 episode number 4 of Teen Mom OG. And the name of this episode is System Overload. Y'all got my system in overload, Teen Mom OG, because this, this season... You have, you have officially, in my opinion, trumped Teen Mom 2 in the drama department this year. Let me tell you, let me tell you guys something, okay? So let's just go ahead and start with this review. The first scene is Amber's scene, and Amber is saying how she hasn't spoken to Matt since she told him, get the heck out of my house, and how they're going to go on this television show, Marriage Boot Camp, where... Maybe it can help. Maybe it can help line your pockets. That's the only reason why y'all went on that show. Because you knew it was over, Amber. Because uh, you knew it was over, Amber, okay? Let's just not, let's not be funny. Let's not try to, let's not play ourselves, okay? You knew exactly what the heck you guys were doing. And by the way, I did not watch that, uh, I didn't watch that. Did it come on yet? See, a girl doesn't know. Because I don't watch that crap. I do not watch spinoff shows of reality shows. That's just stupid to me. Unless it's Team Mom related completely, I'm not going to watch it. So Amber says that Matt, he's in a hotel for a little while and soon they're gonna go off to try couples therapy on this television show. You know darn well that old, that whole show is scripted. So anyway, we already know the outcome of that show. Amber's laying there with her esthetician. I could never say that word right. And her mom is in there with her. I've never seen her mom. What's up mom? And so she's getting these eyelashes put on and the esthetician says, what's going on girl? And Amber's like, you really wanna know? And Amber's like, you know, I really don't know. Here's Amber back into her, uh, should I leave him? Should I not leave him? Yeah, you should leave him. And I'm sick and tired of you wavering as to whether you're gonna leave him or not. Just do it, okay? I don't even wanna go into this conversation. You guys know what the heck she was saying in this conversation. But he's not a bad person. He has issues and blah, blah, blah. Stop taking up for him. The way you just screamed on that guy the last episode, I thought you were completely done, Amber. You're really disappointing me, all right? Stop wavering. You act like you're so strong, but really, you're really weak. And Amber's mom is like, my, Matt came into this relationship with nothing. He's a con. Thank you, mom. Okay, but your daughter's not gonna see that. And then Amber's Amber's mom was like, he's a horrible person. And I'm like, mom, you're, you're A-OK -okay with me. You're A-OK -okay in my book, okay? But Amber will never see that until she wants to see it. That or she's playing dumb. Is she playing dumb or is she just dumb? I think she's dumb, but that's just me. So the next scene is Macy's scene. And Macy's saying that Ryan keeps asking her about visiting with Bentley. And Macy said, she has contacted a lawyer and has had a lawyer type up some stuff for Ryan as far as visitation guidelines. We slide on over to Ryan's scene. Ryan, that's your house? Oh my gosh, Team Mom has done you well. And who's this Randy fella? I see you, Randy. Good gosh. Anyway, <laughs> I cannot resist a good looking man. I will tell you if a man looks good, okay? Okay. Anyway, so we're at Ryan's house and Randy's over there with him, his friend. And Randy's like, how's everything going? And it's Ryan's asking Randy, how you like the house? And Randy's like, yes, yeah, this house, I will give you that, but you better hope there's no hurricane, Ryan. Cause if there's ever a huge hurricane around that part of where y'all living at, your house in the water, all right? Randy says to Ryan, so you look like you're doing good. What's going on? Ryan says he talks to his counselor every week or something like that. And how, you know, he says the only thing that's really bad is the withdrawals. But other than that, he's doing well. And then, um, you know, Randy's like, well, you look good. I'm like, you know, looks can be very deceiving, Randy, as I'm sure you know. Randy and Ryan cannot talk by themselves and have a scene by themselves without Mackenzie. She was back there. I'm just making this up. I don't know what she was doing off camera. She was probably over there painting her nails or reading a newspaper, but she saw the MTV cameras was on Ryan and Randy and Miss Thing had to drop everything and run into the shot. So after they, they were talking for just a little bit, here comes Mackenzie's. So Mackenzie's hungry behind or thirsty behind. She jumps in the camera frame and I don't even know what she was saying. And nothing she said made sense because she just wanted to be on camera. I swear to you, that's how it looked to me. When they were doing their little visitation, when Ryan was starting trouble with Macy, remember that last episode? Well, anyway, he explains that Macy pretty much yanked Bentley into the car and he was upset. 
and Mackenzie puts in her nose and she's over here talking about oh you know when Bentley left he was saying I love you daddy and and what does that have to do with anything so then you know Mackenzie's she's she's throwing her little oh that's so sad no what's really sad Mackenzie I can tell you more than a couple things that are really sad about you okay so Ryan says to Randy that Macy says before they can continue with visitation she's got a letter from her lawyer that she probably typed up herself okay Ryan and when you get that letter and you see his uh his little stamp and his little letterhead okay look, or her or her because a lawyer could be a her too if you see him or hers letterhead we'll see how much Macy made that up so then Ryan goes on to say Macy's never helped me out ever really Macy's never raised your child for you who had Bentley while you were gone for three weeks that is utterly ridiculous the stupidest thing I've ever heard I can't even say it's the stupidest thing I've ever heard Ryan say because he says a lot of stupid things Farrah I'm really liking you this season okay you're really showing your personality and I love it so and you should be like this more often okay I get that you have to put an act on because hate is better than love and you get more more views with hate but girl you need to just be yourself so anyway the next scene is Farrah's scene and Farrah is in the salon as usual her and Sophia they live I told y'all they need to put a doggone nail salon in their house and just hire nail people to just live there Farrah's in there getting a pedicure with Sophia Sophia goes over there right she picks out her polish this girl picks out a polish or a gel. I don't know if it was a gel or a polish. This polish had marijuana leaves, gold marijuana leaves in it. <laughs> Farrah sees the gold marijuana leaves, okay? And she starts laughing. She's like, Sophia, girl, I do not need Snoop Dogg calling me, asking me to let him hang out with you because of this, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was really funny showed a lot of Farrah's personality that crowd was funny though like really little girl you want me but you know she's a little kid she didn't know she just thought it was leaves you know she just thought it was some cute gold leaves and I get it so Farrah says that she's going out of the country for business purposes she says that she's gonna have Michael and Amy I believe her name is her stepmom keep Sophia she's gonna have to have a, a nice strict watch on her on them while they watching her because she says that she had her mom keep Sophia last time and it didn't go so well. Okay, so now Sophia is the new boo boo. Girl, boo boo is Leah. Okay, let's just not. Let's not, Farah. I see what you're doing. Okay, stop being petty. Boys, can you can you stop being petty for a minute? Farah asks Sophia, "Are you worried about me leaving?" Sophia's like, "I'm good. I'm good." Then at the end of the scene, Sophia's like, "Mom, mama, are you done? Like, are you almost done?" And then. Farrah's like, I'm just sitting here relaxing. And then Sophia's like, because I'm bored. And Farrah's like, bummer. <laughs> Farrah, you ain't no good, girl. Don't think that just because someone is a wicked, evil witch one day, they have to always be an evil, wicked witch to you. Sometimes they're not evil, wicked witches. And in this scene, Farrah was all right to me. I'm glad she's a little better this year, but I know the evil Farrah's coming back. I just... I just want to know when it's coming back and I can't wait for it so the next scene is Caitlyn and Tyla Tyla and Caitlyn and Tyler scene and Kurthy's there and Kurthy's like so where's Nova and they're like how uh, April kept Nova for a little while or something like that they said Caitlyn and Tyler are I've said this before in the last episode they are so over their heads they think they're gonna be shipping stuff out they're gonna be printing out tickets. They're gonna be printing out receipts. They're gonna be wrapping stuff in boxes by themselves. It's gonna get to a point where it's gonna be very overwhelming. It's gonna be too much for you people, okay? It's gonna be entirely too much for you guys, for you two people to be doing all of that work, all right? But you guys will realize it soon enough. So it's the countdown to their website launch. Nothing's happening because Tyler was a cheapo probably and chose the cheapest option for his <laughs> He chose the cheapest option for his web hosting and guys when I tell you when I tell you that their Website was down for an entire 24 hours It was down for an entire 24 hours. You know what? This is a fail of a launch if I've ever seen one myself So the next scene is Amber scenes. She says that she's leaving for LA for three entire weeks like you haven't spent enough time away from Leah anyway and she so she wants to spend some time with Leah before she goes Leah's so cute she's standing out the window she's just waiting her mom you know it's amazing how you could be the crappiest parent in the world 
and your children will still, you know, have some type of admiration for you. Amber, we're gonna talk about this doobie wrap you're wearing on your head. What is that? You woke up this morning feeling like you wanted to be Angel Mama. Can I say Angel Mama? Cause that's the kind of thing she had on her head. You ain't making no pancakes. I'm gonna need you to take that thing off your head, okay? <laughs> Amber comes to the house and you know, she's hugging Leah and then they all go inside. Christina's there. Amber greets Christina and then Leah's like, let's do this craft where you both write me letters and I write y'all a letter. Leah, girl, you lefty like me? All right, Leah, okay, Leah. And somehow they get into this conversation, Leah and Amber. And Leah's like how she missed how it used to be, how they used to listen to Milk and Cereal. What is that? Y'all used to listen to LL Cool J's Milk and Cereal? I hope y'all ain't talking. <laughs> I really hope you ain't talking about that one. Y'all know I'm older, okay? I remember. I remember. I ain't stupid. I remember. Amber goes on to say to Leah that, you know, we, we need to get back to doing some of the stuff that we used to do, spending time together. And um, Leah, girl, you better enjoy it. Better enjoy your little time with your mom now because homegirl's about to have huge things going on in her life. So we get back to the scene with Caitlyn and Tyler and Tyler tells Caitlyn, hey, can you update the people who are waiting to get on the website that, you know, we're having technical difficulties, all right? So Caitlyn sends a message to them saying, hey, technical difficulties due to high traffic, blah, blah, blah. Things happen, okay? Nobody's perfect. Tyler says, maybe I underestimated the traffic. And then Caitlyn says, yep, you did. And I told you not to. And the look that Tyler gave Caitlyn was, girl, I wanna just, I just wanna smack you in the forehead. All right, so at this point, they're in the car driving somewhere and it has been six hours that the website has been down and someone calls Tyler on the phone and he's like, I didn't like how the other guy was talking to me and I, they were talking about what's going on with the website basically okay that's all i got from this that's that's the gist of what i got from what he was saying all right so the next scene is farah and farah says that she needs to make sure that her businesses are running smoothly before she leaves in a couple days to go on her business trip so she's there she's moving stuff she's getting michael to move stuff michael you doing that for free so then we get to this scene where michael and farah and sophia are sitting down and farah's like okay sophia let's run down the list of rules and Sophia runs down a list of rules that's going to be in place while she's not there, which a couple of them, they were normal. I mean, you know, don't answer the door for people you don't know. Don't answer the phone for people you don't know. Don't invite friends over. Michael, are you going to give fatherly advice every time we see you in a segment with Farah? It's getting dry, it's getting stale, and old like two-day-old bread. I'm over it, all right? All right so the next scene is Macy's scene and Macy's at Keeley's house. Keeley's preggers had no idea. What do the friends ask Macy every time they see her? They don't even ask, how you doing? The first thing out of their mouths are, how's Ryan doing, okay? How's Bailey and Ryan? Macy says to that, that she's already told Ryan that she is gonna have an attorney do up a letter before we can get this visitation situation going on. Macy goes through the illiterate text messages that she got back. Mackenzie, mind your business and butt out of it. I don't care that you're married to Ryan. Bentley is not your business. So then Macy says that she, after she got that other, the first message that she knows was Ryan because it wasn't in proper English, she gets correct punctuation and English in the next few texts. And basically one of the texts, one of the first texts that she got was, you know, if you needed any clarification about rehab, you got that? Uh, she did? When? Cause I didn't see it. Maybe that happened off camera. Doubtful though. Then Macy gets a text back that, well, look, since I've tried to communicate with you, something this stupid text message said, I'm gonna have to seek legal action. And then Macy's like, I should have texted her back. Okay, Mackenzie. Cause you know that was Mackenzie that was doing that y'all. The end of the text said, we'll have to take legal action. Are Ryan and Mackenzie that stupid that they really think they're gonna get some type of visitation she's given him so much leeway all these years i thought it was court ordered the way that visitation was going i really thought it was court ordered macy says oh you want to take me to court okay well in the text message back macy says well i'm going to need you to do a drug testing hair and urine to make sure that you're not putting my child at risk and i would have done the same thing and she says even at my expense so she's gonna pay for it so macy says this costs like 400 dollars. of course 400 is a drop in the bucket for these girls okay so she said at my expense nobody responds back in the text message i wonder why i wonder why I wonder why nobody responded at the text message because y'all know you're not gonna win anything. Y'all know that that man is not clean. Macy goes on to say that 
it's on it's on my dime so it shouldn't be a problem y'all wanted to take legal action right you wanted to do everything that you and you wanted to do everything in your power to get visitation so then do the drug test shouldn't be a problem right and then macy says she doesn't want to take away bentley from going to Larry and Jen's house because Bentley has asked a couple times, about three times, when is he going to go back over there? But Macy has to be safe. You know, you want your kids to be safe. You don't want your kids to be around people who are nefarious characters. Is that a word? I hope it's a word. I'm always making up words on this channel. The next scene is Caitlyn's scene. Caitlyn's off at the stables instead of with her daughter. You know, Caitlyn, you're with that horse more than you're with your daughter in these scenes, that's a major problem. So anyway, she comes home from the horse thing and she's with Tyler asking, hey, what's going on? And Tyler's like, I talked to the person or whatever and I told, and he was like, you're under your attack, you're having a cyber attack. And then Tyler's like, no, I have like two point something million followers and my wife has like three million followers on uh, you know, social media. So all those people, they want to order. Tyler says that, the company or whoever gave them a bigger server and everything's running fine now. And Caitlin's like, okay, well, orders are coming through, fine. And Tyler's like, yeah, they're coming through fine. And then Caitlin's like, how many orders are there so far? And Tyler's like, there are 50 orders. And you guys, you two people, are gonna be the one packing those 50 orders. Keep in mind that those 50 orders are not just going to stop. Like, you got those 50 orders and you probably got 50 more coming in. So. You you know what, you guys are definitely over your heads, but I hope you get it together. You have enough money, hire somebody to do all that extra stuff, the shipping, uh, the wrapping of, of stuff, pulling of the um, packages or pulling of the merchandise when you get those orders, because y'all are gonna need all the help you can get. Caitlin is in the room with some chick, I don't know her name, and Nova's in there on her paper. Caitlin gives Nova this look like she was possessed of the devil. I understand the mom look, I don't know why people feel the need to explain looks to me. I got three kids. Not saying I'm an expert, but those looks never work with my kids. They don't play that, okay? <laughs> I got some strong-willed children. Looks did not phase them at all, all right? Caitlin's in there in that room, and she's, uh, you know, packaging stuff. I see they have a whole bunch of boxes and stuff, and um, it's beautiful that they want to be, like, hands-on. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm like, they're over their heads, and don't get me wrong. It's beautiful that they want to be hands-on. That's how it's going to be in the beginning. But you're going to get to a point, hopefully, if you guys get successful enough. If you guys get successful enough, you're not going to be able to do all of that. Okay? You're not going to be able to be all hands-on. You're just going to have to be standing in the background, pointing and telling everybody else what to do. Okay? That's how it's going to be soon enough. So we get to Amber's scene, and Amber is on the way to marriage boot camp. She's on the plane with her mom. Then we fly over, fly over, to the scene, and it's Gary. And Gary's there with Melanie, their friend, Gary's friend and Christina, and they're sitting there and they're doing a little barbecue. It must be July 4th or something. Gary, those burgers are done. Take them off the grill, okay? I don't know how dark you like your burgers, but those burgers look cooked to me. Christina's like, what are we gonna do today? And Gary's like, well, I would have invited Amber to come over and spend time with us, but she's in marriage boot camp. So Christina says, well, what happens if she comes back from marriage boot camp and her and Matt are together? What's gonna happen with Leah? And Gary's like, you know what? I can't keep Leah from going to her mom's house, but for now, Leah's gonna be over here until that situation blows over. And Gary says he's sure that Amber doesn't wanna be back with Matt because she's seeing other dudes. And this one dude, he's legit because he's verified on Twitter. <laughs> Amber, girl, Amber. Amber, how many times do I gotta talk to you, Amber? He's verified on Twitter, so that makes him official. I need you to raise your criteria and I need you to raise your standards, okay? Are you gonna raise your standards? Please do. The next scene wasn't about nothing, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. It's just basically Farah packing her bags and getting Michael, the servant, her servant, she acts like he's a, her servant or something, to help her pack her bags. And then Sophia, she sneaks off to the side and writes a little sweet note. I got, I don't know what the note said. I couldn't read what it said on the screen. I'm assuming it's a sweet note. And she hid that note in her mom's suitcase. For some reason, MTV is giving Deborah her own scenes and um, would you not? Could you stop, please? Cause I'm sick and tired of seeing this lady. So she has these ridiculously long hair extensions still. I really hate it, okay? And it's not me saying, oh, you're older, you shouldn't have longer hair or oh, you shouldn't have these ripped jeans and you're 60 something years old. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all right now, I ain't never dressing my age, okay? I ain't never dressing my age. So y'all can forget about that. So I ain't gonna down her for how she dresses, but that hair is a bit much, okay, Deborah? That hair is a bit much. I won't say it's not got nothing to do with your age. It just don't look good on you. 
and your friend's a liar. Is he really your friend or is he an actor? Because there's no way in the world if somebody's really your friend, they're going to tell you something looks good when it looks like crap, okay? That's not a real friend. So there's Matthew again with those beautiful teeth, even though he's a liar. They're in a hat, a hat store or some type of store and they're trying to buy stuff and Deborah's saying, you know, I want to get a hat that doesn't make me look old. Deborah, baby girl, does that make you feel younger that I called you baby girl? Cause you're no, you're nowhere near being a baby. Okay, you've been, you haven't been a baby in a very long time. You're an old lady. Okay, you're older. I'm older. If you're old, you're old. Okay. You want to dress, dress how you want to dress. But stop using the excuse. Oh, I don't want to look old. Cause you're gonna look old regardless. Oh, so the next scene is Macy's scene, but we're not at Macy's house. We're at Ryan's parents' house. So Jen is there, and Larry walks in the room, and. They said something, it wasn't important. Jenny, Jenny asks them, how's Ryan doing? And of course, Larry and Jen, oh, he's honky dory. I call him and I can actually understand everything he's saying for now, Larry, okay, for now. And he's like, you know, we were so relieved when he went, went to rehab for 30 whole days. Well, first of all, he wasn't in there 30 days. He was only in there 21 days. So then Larry is like, you know, it was a relief because I knew he wasn't gonna die, Larry. I've watched and I'm not trying to say I know everything just because I watched a couple of episodes of Intervention. I'm not dare going to say that. But he was in there for 21 days. This is like his very first treatment. You know how many times people have to go into treatment before they completely, I'm not going to say heal because as an addict you're never fully healed, but you know, on the like right path at least several times, okay? There goes Jen. Jen starts crying and then Larry says something about Bentley and Jen are Ryan's triggers. I thought Macy was his trigger. I didn't hear that in this episode. Mackenzie, you're a liar. I, I always knew you were a liar, right? This just confirmed it. Also, Larry looks at the camera, directly at the camera, and he says, you know what? We knew that Ryan had a drug problem, and I don't know why they enabled it. I guess it's difficult. I'm trying to have sympathy for them because I know it, it has to be difficult in that situation. You have a child, who's doing drugs and how do you get somebody to stop doing drugs because you can't watch somebody 24 hours a day so I'm not gonna sit here in judgment of that I don't know how do you get someone to stop and I hate to keep going back to intervention but I'm just saying you guys have seen a and E's intervention and you watch these people and you know darn well even after the intervention these people continue to do what they want to do so it has to be Ryan wanting to stop so I'm not gonna put all of this off on them yes they are enablers but there's just so much you can do when you have an individual who has a mind of their own who they're grown they're getting MTV money they have the wherewithal they have the means to buy these drugs and so they're gonna do it if that's the kind of stuff they're into that's what they're gonna do until they're ready to stop so the next scene is Caitlyn's scene. She says that her and Tyler have sold out almost of everything that they had and they're ready to take a break already. Caitlyn, Tyler, and a bunch of other people. I don't know who those people are. I only recognize Caitlyn, Tyler, and the mom. They're on a boat and they're boating and they're, Caitlyn's just basically saying how she didn't, she didn't expect for the site to do so well. Tyler's mom is like, what do you mean you didn't expect it? You should expect it, so whatever. Anyway, next scene. So the next scene is Farrah's scene and Farrah is sitting at dinner with, I think her name was Amy and Michael and she's letting them know, look, the grandma situation, that's on hold until I come back from wherever. I'm not sure why Farrah's keeping Sophia away from her mom. I understand Dr. David's crazy, but I just don't understand why Deborah's not allowed to even call Sophia, Farrah, was like I really wish it was different I wish that you know things were different between her and her mom and then she starts crying and Amy gets up and I hope I'm saying the right name I'm always making up names for these people and Amy gets Amy gets up and gives her a hug and I'm really sorry talking about oh um, I'm happy to make you part of my family I'm sorry I have to put on these fake voices guys because that's how I feel when I hear these people when I hear them this is how they sound to me okay so the whole time I'm sitting there and I'm like, Amy, you are so freaking fake and phony. Okay, go sit down somewhere because I don't believe anything you're saying. It's just so phony. It just did not come off genuine to me. So the next scene is Amber's scene and she on somebody porch. I'm assuming it's hers. And Kiki's there. And I think the other guys, I feel like I saw the name David. Anyway, Kiki goes, so what happened with marriage boot camp? Because this was like Amber had just got back from marriage boot camp. And Amber was like, how mad? He lied the entire time. Oh my gosh, what a, sh what a shocking surprise. Matt lied the entire time. 
oh my gosh, and water's wet and the sky's blue, or whoever his name is, asks Amber, so, you know, is Matt accepting that it's over? Because Amber had said she completely broke up with Matt, and Amber says, no, he's not accepting that it's over. Well, I hope that I don't see Matt on my TV screen anymore in the show. That's what I'm hoping. Kiki asks, so did you guys tell Leah? And Amber's like, yeah, we told Leah. Leah seems fine with it. But, you know, out of all of this, some good came out of it. The good is I don't have to deal with this bull crap anymore. Kiki's like, so you feel free? And Amber's like, yeah, I feel free. So now, you guys, this is my life. I'm single with dogs. You single with dogs, but not for long. So the next scene is Macy's scene. She's in the supermarket with Bentley and Maverick. And Bentley, you can hear him saying, am I going to Mimi's house this week? And Macy's like, no. Kills her to say no. But until Ryan, who has still not contacted her, does the drug testing, Billy ain't going over there, okay? We get back to Ryan's house, and Ryan's sitting on the couch, and he decides to call a lawyer. He calls the lawyer. His name is Dana. I think I'm not going to try to remember his last name. I do remember that his first name was Dana because I like that name. And Ryan is like, look, I'm having a problem with custody. And then the lawyer is like, okay, so how old your son? He's eight years old. Dana asks, Ryan, have you guys ever had a custody agreement right now in court? And Ryan's like, nope, never had a custody agreement. And then Dana's like, so what made you want, what makes you want to decide to go to court now after all these years? And then Ryan explains that, you know, she's keeping me from my child. You know, Ryan selectively left out a lot of information. Ryan explains that he used to get Bentley every weekend, but since he came back from rehab, now Macy doesn't want to let uh, Bentley go over there, okay? So then the lawyer, Dana, asks Ryan, what, is your, what was your drug of choice? Guys, you ready? I couldn't believe this myself. But Ryan says, heroin. The camera pans over to Mackenzie and she wants to crawl back inside her mother's womb, okay? That's how embarrassed Mackenzie was. And I am... I'm really in shock, guys. I knew it was bad. I did not know it was heroin bad, okay? And you just a step away from crack because, hello, crack is heroin. Crack, crack cocaine is the same as heroin, okay? It's just cheaper form. But anyway, how do I know that? How do I know that? Documentaries, okay? I have never done drugs myself. I watch a lot of documentaries, all right? So then the lawyer asks Ryan, when was the last time that you saw your son? And Ryan says he saw him recently, but only for five minutes. And then Ryan says, you know, she doesn't return my phone calls. She doesn't return my texts. Ryan, you are a freaking liar because the last text that Macy sent you was, will you submit to a drug test in order for Bentley to come over there? So you're lying to your lawyer. How are you gonna get a lawyer and lie to him? You're not telling him the full complete truth. How the heck do you expect him to do anything for you? So then this lawyer, Dana, says, that Macy's probably gonna use this little itty bitty heroin substance addiction as a way to keep him from seeing his son, which is a real crappy thing to do. That's a crappy thing to do? Trying to protect your children? You shocked the heck out of me, I had no idea, okay? I had no idea protecting your child from a freaking drug addict was a bad thing. Lawyer Dana tells Ryan that you need to be focused on passing those drug screens because I've never seen a judge say I'm gonna create a parenting you know, schedule for someone who can't even consistently pass drug screens, who is struggling to pass them. And you can see Mackenzie sitting over there knowing darn full well that Ryan ain't passing no drug screens. He's probably still shooting up right now, okay? He looks, he looks high right now. As a matter of fact, he looks high right now. Alrighty, guys, that is the end of my review. Thank you so much for watching my channel. Make sure you check out my other videos. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not, I'm not gonna make the end of this very long. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will be back with you guys in the next video. You guys know I post a lot of videos during the week because, um, because I can, okay? <laughs> if I have time, I will post extra videos, all right? And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.